I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> so, hi, welcome. It's Rick Lawrence, editor of Group Magazine, with Mark Cornelson, who was just on the 13th season, is that right? 13th season, 13th yep. season of the Biggest Loser. And a lot of people knew this, but maybe some didn't, that Mark's a longtime youth pastor. And um, uh, for those of you who've watched this show, uh, you, you know this was kind of an unusual year <laughs> for the show. A lot of uh, pretty unprecedented things happened this year, and Mark was right sort of in the fulcrum of all that stuff happening. And, and, uh, and Mark, how, many, how, many, how much weight did you lose by the end of the whole by the By the finale, uh, 101 pounds. 101 so pounds. I lost. Yeah. yeah. Looks fabulous, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. But we're, we're going to talk today a little bit about... Um, about youth ministry as it connects into health, fitness, weight, not just the physical aspect of that, but um, one of the things we've noticed, and I've said this to Mark, uh, is at our national conference, for instance, um, we've all of our team has noticed that there is a problem with fitness in youth ministry. There's a problem with obesity in youth ministry that goes way beyond the national average. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about this for a year or two now, trying to figure out ways to address this. And on the surface, it seems like, well, how does that connect into ministry? And I think the deeper we've gotten into taking a look at this, the more we've realized that it has a lot to do with the culture of youth ministry, the stresses that surround youth ministry, and um, uh, the, the uh, challenges that youth ministry presents to just staying fit. So uh, we're gonna have a conversation today with Mark about um, his experience and uh, what what he experienced going through this whole thing and what he knows now that he didn't know before. So thanks, Mark, for, sure. for yeah, being Yeah, thanks here. for having me. It's cool. So maybe you could start out a little bit and just tell us, go back to who you were, what you were thinking when you first decided to try to get on this show that is a show about losing weight. What what was going through your head? What, what made you want to take that kind of risk? Um, We've been big fans of the show for for a long time, and at the at the end of the season or somewhere along the way, they start having those ads that say, "Would you like to be on The Biggest Loser?" And um, my my oldest son, who's 19, and I were watching with our whole family, and just one of those came on, and, and I've I've been through the whole roller coaster of of losing weight and then gaining it all back and more and all that, and this was at a particular time where I I was bigger than I've ever been and just didn't feel good and. Uh, he, he as well was really struggling with with his weight, mm -hmm. and just we saw that, and I just remember looking over at him and going, "Hey, you want to you want to give this a shot?" And right out of his mouth, he's like, "Nope, not at not at all." He did not want to do it, <laughs> and uh, so we talked but a little bit. Why did he want to do it? He just just the idea. I mean, the idea of going on publicly yeah. with something that you're already struggling with, you know, uh, that everybody around you sees anyway. Um, he just wasn't ready for that. And and uh, we talked over the next week or so and finally just kind of said to him, you know, let's just do the application online. You know, who says we're going to make it? I mean, there's no chance. You know, how many people are going to do this? And he's finally agreed. He was like, all right, we'll try it. And uh, just it got the ball rolling for... for um, Fathers and sons to be on the show. They've only had two, I think. Uh, yeah. uh, so we were kind of unique in that. Uh, and what, what is the application process? Are you telling them, here's why I think this would be good for me? And is it a video application? How does that all work? There's there's so many different parts to it, Rick. It's, it's, the first initial thing is basically a lot of information. Um, how much do you weigh? Why do you weigh what you weigh? If you struggle with this all your life? And it's all uh, it's all just, just basically... Um, uh, just typing in information, but they do live casting calls as well. Mm. And so we got a phone call, and they said, "Would you come to Austin, which was closest for us? Uh, we want to meet you and your son." And, mm. and uh, so we we went to a casting call, so we got to meet face to face with some people. Um, mm. Got another phone call with another interview. Then we got asked to send in videos. Were the next stage of that, so we sent a lot of video stuff. And so there's a lot of pieces along the way. But the initial thing is really. Why would you be a good fit for the show? Mm. Uh, I don't know that I, uh, my son's story is very, very unique. I'm, I'm just one of those guys who's always struggled with my weight, mm -hmm. and so I don't think I was ex exciting. I think they were really drawn to him, mm. and the fact that we were father and son, which, mm. which is why do you think tough. they were drawn to him? Well, Chisholm uh, had a really bad accident when he was uh, nine years old mm -hmm. and shattered his uh, right ankle, broke through both bones, all the growth plates. Over the course of five years had seven different surgeries, uh, was in a wheelchair for about a year and a half, wow. was on crutches, and during that time period, from nine to say 15, 
he's the, you know that's a pretty significant time of life for activity and you know baseball and all the things that guys his age are going through and he's stuck on a couch or he's in a wheelchair and he gained a lot of weight yeah. during that so for him to be the age that he was to be yeah. the size that he was and yeah. the story behind that was really really yeah, interesting. interesting just for people that maybe have never watched the show or are not that familiar with it it's a reality show uh that has how many 22 24 this season there were 20 people 20 people yeah. at the start of the show and and like every reality show every week uh, somebody leaves the show um, and the challenge is is to to lose weight obviously but the show's uh, sort of context is you get to learn the psychological context that people have on the show and mm -hmm. how they got to where they are. There's a lot of stress because these folks are away from home with no contact, no communication for months as they're uh, involved in this. And there's stresses that come up between people on the show. A lot of stuff gets squeezed out of people, I would say, uh, on, this sh on this show. It's a pretty high stress environment. And there's a big prize at the end. Right. And, and there's people that are, you know, bent on, on making sure they win that. So there's a lot of factors involved in this, in this kind of reality show, but one of the primary leverages is just the length of time that you're completely away, right. but out of communication with your family and sort of um, under the control of, of the show. Right, right. absolutely. So, so just so if, if you haven't seen the show, that's, that's some of the basic context, and Mark, you can fill in any of the details so you're applying you're you're meeting with people mm -hmm. um, there they seem attracted to Chisholm's story in particular your son's story yep. and then you get a call what that says you're yeah finally we get near the end and they they uh, give us a call and say we want you to come to California uh, and there were a certain number of people I don't even know what the total number ended up being that they brought for about a two-week time period where they did Medical testing and all kinds of tests on us, and, th and just for two weeks for two weeks. Wow! Uh, and we're in a hotel, and out of that, the people that they brought—that's who they decide uh. is going to is going to be on the show. And so, at the end of that time, about two weeks in, they pull a big group of us into a room and they say, "Congratulations, you're wow. going to be on the show." It's amazing. And so, so uh, what were your what were yours and Chisholm's feelings at that moment? That, that this long journey now you're actually going to be on the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Did it kind of yeah, Chisholm, Chisholm was excited. From I mean, he he never he never paused. Uh, I remember when they said you're you're on the show, and everybody in the room just erupts. I mean, they're all excited, and Chisholm and I are hugging each other, and I'm, so, and I'm like, we just made it on this show. Yeah. And then literally the next second, Rick, I was like, uh oh, oh, I just made it on the show. <laughs> I mean, it was this moment of what did I just do, you know? Um, and and my wife and I, my, my other kids, were incredibly close. And I think in that moment, suddenly I, it dawned on me, yeah. I'm fixing to be really away from. Them. I mean, yeah. this is this yeah. is really going to be uh, a challenge. So it was it was really interesting because I'll, I'll never forget the joy and then yeah. instant. Oh, what did I? <laughs> what have I done to yeah, myself? I totally get that. So when you think back to what you said to the producers and to all of them, so you were you were being forced to really assess yourself mm -hmm. and kind of sum up. Um, how you got to where you were. So right. what what were you telling them back then? For for me, there were a couple of other things. Uh, what, my main thing was time. I just, I, I used that as my excuse for why I just didn't, I didn't work out, I didn't eat healthy. I just, I needed convenience. I didn't have time to work. I, and, you know, I was spending time for me. I mean, as we talk about the ministry connection with some of this, for me, I was hanging out with teenagers. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I had a more active lifestyle than most have who have nine to five normal jobs you know um, I wasn't getting exercise I wasn't healthier but that was the rationale that I had in my mind um, and for me largely it was I was lazy I was tired and the last thing I would think about at the end of the day was um, try to do something active try and, and started really thinking through that um, one of the things that I, that I really shared I tried to share a whole lot on the show with the other people and the producers and questions and all that was as a pastor, there just there became this moment early on where where I was I realized part of this for me is was the fact that I was limiting myself to what God really could do with me. Hmm. I, I was holding. I mean, as as you know, we can get into the theology of this, but uh, for all practical purposes, I was holding God back in what the full purpose was for for my life to, as a pastor. Because whether it was something mental that I literally was going. I can't, I'm not even going to attempt that because of how I see myself, how I feel about myself, or whether it was an actual physical limitation that, mm -hmm. hey, I need you to go there, and I couldn't go there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I realized early on, I've got to get this under control because mm -hmm. 
I'm not being everything I can be as a pastor. I'm not being everything I can be to these students. Um, and I'm not being a, a, a model to them. You know, I'm not, I'm not that maybe, maybe I'm giving a really good spiritual advice on things, but um, they were seeing, there, there was something lacking in me that was visible. So I think, uh, even though maybe none of them would say it, there was a part of me that even though I would say it, they're looking at something that's not representing what's being said. So then there's a connection between the spiritual and physical and, uh, that just wasn't there. And so yeah. for, for me, I just that ultimately became my thing was I've got to do this because I don't want to limit anything at all with what God wants to use me for. Mm. Now that, I, I bet a lot of people even watching this, a lot of youth pastors who are either watching this or reading this interview right now, they've had some similar thoughts. I, I, I know I'm not doing everything I should be. I'm kind of not living congruently right now because, mm -hmm. you know, kids, everyone around me can see that there's an area of my life that, that is really not in control or uh, I'm, I'm not healthy in that area of life. Right. So it's obvious to people. And they, 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 there's a negative voice they hear inside about that that's trying to motivate them. Mm -hmm. But for most people, that's not enough. Um, that, that, that doesn't lead to a decision or a life-changing decision. Right. Do you feel like it, um, when you started this process that that was a life-changing decision for you? Or do you feel like the result of that threw you into a circumstance that forced the issue for you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a really good question. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll answer it in two different ways just real quick. When Chisholm and I tried out, we found out that there were a lot of people that have tried out for the show six, seven, eight times, uh -huh. and they're still, I mean, for years they've been trying out for the show. That's people who are believing that this show is going to be the thing that ultimately yeah. changes me. Yeah. Um, we both said, it's a one-time shot. We're going to do this. If it doesn't work out, then we're going to do what it takes. We're going to start to do what, it, do what it takes. Through the course of the show, being away from my family, the crazy circumstances, it, I think it uh, reinforced that in me to go, I'm not going to take time away from my family for five months to then turn around and, and not let this be about mm -hmm. changing my life. Yeah. And, and so I think I already had that motivation in the beginning with this whole thing, but it was definitely reinforced as I went, yeah. okay, I've given up a lot to gain this. I'm not, I, I can't go back again. Yeah. There's so much to loop back here too. I'm just thinking about um, something you said to me earlier today that about two thirds of the people on the show end up gaining a lot of the weight back that they lose. Right. So. Um, and that's typical of, of people who lose weight. They go up and down. They use techniques. They, they you know, I've noticed even as, as I've lost weight, um, one of the things that has really struck me is that sometimes I've seen people around me trying to lose weight, and they do it by, uh, they'll cook boiled chicken and have that for lunch. Right. And it just looks disgusting. <laughs> and, yeah. And I think Absolutely. there's just nothing, for me, I know I'm never going to have boiled chicken for lunch every day. And, so I had to get to a, a place where I, I really had to think through, what can I keep doing? Right. And we've talked about this a little bit, and uh, I wonder when that idea of doing things that were sustainable to you started to really catch hold in you. It Was it on the show that you started to realize, I can only yeah. do things that I can keep doing? Right, this? absolutely. Yeah, I mean, from the very beginning for me, uh, because you're, you're, we're on the show. You're getting told a lot of different things. There's, there's doctors. There's nutritionists. There's trainers. There's, uh, and everybody kind of has their own little tweaks to what's going on uh, and to, ha to how you can be successful. But then, in a lot of different directions, you have this different different definitions of success. For some people on the show, the definition of success is winning the two hundred fifty thousand at the end. Mm -hmm. um, for some, it's I want to be healthy. For some, it's I want to get all my medications out of my system. I want to be off of, and so. I, for me, early on, I went. I'm not going to gimmick this thing. I'm going to. I'm going to do what I need to do. What anything that I choose to do is going to be something that when I get home, I could still see myself doing this. Mm -hmm. And so, outside of working out six hours a day, which you know, plus, which we all knew that was not going to be sustainable in yeah. real life, but that's just a part of the show. Um, I didn't play with my food. I ate calories that were healthy calories that um, that is still about where I am now being home mm -hmm. because I was like, I want something that's transferable. Yeah. So that, because we had heard a lot that there are a lot of people that they get home and the shock of being off the show is yeah. what really, really messes things and, up. And you have kind of, I think this is typical for a lot of people, um, especially in youth ministry, surrounded by the kinds of foods you are right. in youth ministry.